you're trying to save someone's life and yeah, you have to and try boom, to... we're taking indirect fire. Roadside tracheotomies. What the heck is a heart massage? Plus all the medical drama of the Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Today, we are breaking down and reacting to all of the military medical scenes from MASH. Here with me is my friend and military expert, Cameron Fast. What's going on, everybody? If you don't know me, I'm a former Army Ranger and California National Guardsman, and I am just ready to react to MASH. Well, let's dive in, right? Let's do this. Let's go. Radar, radar, pull over! Huh? Stop the Jeep, he's choking us! Something wrong! Typically, if you're choking, it'd probably be more like the Heimlich maneuver. If you're choking on a foreign body versus is he yeah. choking on like his own blood? Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. What's the matter? Help me. Help me to clear his throat. Ooh. Choking. Okay. Yeah, that, there you go. Everybody knows the first thing you do with a casualty is just pound on his back. He's definitely laying down on a very rough, I'm assuming a Jeep. Yeah, oh. back in the day, the Jeeps weren't known for their great <laughs> suspension. All the technology we have today where you can just bomb over bumps. Laying yes. out a litter on the back of one of these probably <laughs> isn't the most, you know, steady ride Smooth. you're going to have. <laughs> Where's the man wounded? In the chest, Hawkeye, but I don't think that's the trouble. His tongue is swollen and he can't breathe. Is he getting any air at all? No, sir, not much. Hardly any of You didn't even check, buddy. <laughs> right, we're, yeah, we're just like, some feel, we're not yeah. checking to see. Yeah, usually if you're checking airway, you do right. like a head tilt chin lift yeah. or a jaw Ooh. thrust. At least he was able to look and see like, okay, his tongue is huge, mm -hmm. and now he can't breathe. So then the question, is it all the way back in the posterior pharynx? Sure. Blocking your nasal passage as well. Okay. One of you's gonna have to cut a small hole in the man's throat to let air in. Tracheotomy, cut that, and then... Do your best to shut the tube in. In the first aid kit, get the alcohol. Sanitize. Sterilize yep. the yeah. knife in the man's neck. Okay, we're doing it. Okay, <laughs> Pour it all <laughs> over him. Look for a notch at the base of his throat. The notch at the base. The base. So like your manubrium. It's gonna be a little blood, but that's okay. Oh, well, sure, okay. Oh, oh and, and we're taking. <laughs> and you're trying to save someone's life, and yeah, you have and to try to- Yeah, and boom, we're taking indirect fire. Initially, bam, adrenaline rush. After a firefight's commencing, yeah. they have to do lace reports, which is liquid, ammo, casualty, and equipment. Uh -huh. So they literally have to physically put their hands on their soldiers and check them for bullet wounds, because yeah. half the time, your adrenaline's pumping so much yep. that you don't even know you've been shot. Make an incision between the rings of tissue and then stick the tube in the hole you made. The man will be breathing through that tube. Now work fast. Oh. Woo, good for you. Get it, buddy. Oh. At this point, you don't give a crap about sterility. Yeah, yeah make sure you spit on it to yeah. lube it up to what you put it in. There. Which, I mean, if you had to, you do it, and yeah. then you treat with antibiotics later. Whatever you have to do in a field setting to make sure that tube gets in there with minimal resistance. Yeah. 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 It was half a joke. It was about 50%. <laughs> He's breathing. He's breathing. You hear that? He's breathing. He did it. Why are you putting the radio to the guy breathing? It's like, hey, okay, great. He's breathing. Let's get the hell Let's out of here. Let's go. <laughs> like, Okay, tape the tube in place and pack some cotton around it to stop the bleeding. Okay. Well, the skin and the tissue seem to close right in around the tube. There you go. Father, that's exactly what's supposed to happen. You did it. Nice. Everybody Ooh, celebrate. Yeah. yeah, but he's yes. not done yet, so why are we celebrating? Yes. In the military setting, especially out in the field, we'll typically have very well-trained medics with yep. us. Me, personally, just as an RFR, yeah. like, I'm not going to touch a cry. The medic's going to be there. He's right. going to tell me what to do. If you're just two guys, a lieutenant and a driver, this is a terrible situation. Terrible. What this tells me is everybody else is dead. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Still no pulse. Oh, boy. You're losing it. Wait a minute. They're wearing socks on their head? I know. I don't know what this <laughs> is. When I was on deployment, I got to do a lot of time in the OR. We were literally in an abandoned schoolhouse, uh -huh. so there's dirt everywhere, and we just were in a room yep. with litters, and yep. we were just working on casualties that would come in. Sure. The hell I am. I'm not going to let somebody screw up my bad hand. Oh, so I think he's doing some sort of cardiac massage. The heart massage. Yes. I'm getting something. 60 over 40. Okay, so we got a blood pressure systolic of 60 over just diastolic of 40. Okay. Not the best. You but should be double that. <laughs> for a dumb guy like me, if the blood pressure is super low, that means we're not pumping as we're much as we should. We're not pumping efficiently at all. Okay. Getting a pulse. Getting a pulse. It's stronger. So if he's getting a stronger pulse, it means blood pressure's going up. Okay. Speeding on its own. There you go. 92 over 60. Bingo. You did it. You did it. It's just like a misconception of everything. What did he fix? I don't know what he fixed. Nobody knows what's going on here. You've done a cardiac massage. Yeah. Cardiac massage meaning basically CPR of somebody's heart. You would literally have the heart in your hand. And it's not like you really get to practice this a lot. Yeah, this isn't like, you know. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a weird like... Like a clapping. Yes. Oh my God, 
God, what's wrong with him? We don't know yet. Acute appendicitis. Maybe just gastritis. But it may be appendicitis. Gastritis is just like inflammation of the stomach, sure. causing some vomiting. We is that like stomach flu, classic stomach flu? Or... Yeah, and if it includes the other end, then you go gastroenteritis. When you were in that facility where you were helping surgeries, what do you do when you feel sick? Suck it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, he's real sick. So, real sick. I mean, you do get sick when you're in the middle of nowhere. Right? And most of the time, it's food poisoning. Right. One situation where I drank some bad water that wasn't properly purified, and I had to be, like, evacuated out of the field. Get to the chopper! Because wow. it was just coming out of every oh. orifice. It's crazy. Like, the things you don't think will take you out. You're talking about removing a healthy organ. No, I figure his appendix is about as sick as his mind. Doctors aren't supposed to take bodies apart. They're supposed to put them together. Why? So guys like that can take them apart again? You get a CT scan nowadays. Yeah. See if it's inflamed. But a lot of times surgeons would go in thinking it was appendicitis and they found the appendix to be totally normal. They will actually take the appendix out though. Really? Yeah. Just because they're, they're like, they're like, just oh, in case, we're in here. Come. Okay. So, it was pink and perfect and I tossed it in the scrap bucket. There it is. Oh. <laughs> For any trauma around the diaphragm yep. where just guts are pouring out, literally, the way we would treat that is literally just grab them all, yep. pile them on top, and then just wrap a bandage around it. Can't stop that artery from bleeding. This transplant won't work. We might as well write off the whole leg. I'm ready when you need me, Hawkeye. Thanks, Father. But what I really need is a vascular clamp that's small enough to control an artery without crushing it. Oh, there you go. A little vascular. So a specific clamp. The clamps! So you don't just, like, destroy it by holding sure. it too tight. What you could also do is tie it off, but it just depends on what vessel, and if you're going to tie that off, are you going to cause the death of the tissue distally sure. shared or not? This clamp is mainly for heart surgery. Why don't we just get the right one? It's not that easy, Padre. The right one doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. fancy. So this is where they make their own tools. I mean, you guys have to do that in the field. Oh, absolutely. Like a lot of the products that are available for like tactical gear today, yeah. like five years ago, just weren't things. They were literally just made of duct tape, cardboard, zip yeah. ties. Yeah. Anything to make the job happen. Well, here we are in the fender and body shop. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Take a break. Wait, wait, wait. It can't be that hard. Let's, let's take it apart first. And then that way it'll be, you know, Apart. So just make a smaller clamp. I mean, look at all those test tubes and all those. I know, the classic blue water. Yeah, I have no <laughs> idea what they're doing. Separate. You're a genius. Wow. Well, yeah. Now what do we do? Rubber band it together. Yeah. Straighten one of these out and go from there. How do you straighten one of these out? You're going to heat it up. Heat it up Let's on see. a Bunsen burner. Yeah, there you go. Surgical steel. Designed to precise specifications. I guess surgical steel, I think, takes a really high melting point because they have to sterilize these sure. to a certain temperature to then be able to use it on somebody else. Or just a really heavy hammer. That is correct. Alloy of delicately balanced components. Hit it with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's the military mind. Yes. Yeah, Put when in doubt, hand. try to break it. What are you doing here? Well, the colonel said the two of you were going to try and build the clamp yourselves. I said to myself, I said, Charles, this you have got to see. Sadist. Sadist. <laughs> I want you to pretend I'm not here, gentlemen. Just go about your business, and I will blend into the woodwork. Nice. On a military base, especially back in the 60s, you know, the USO men have been on another base with their tour entertaining the troops. You got to find entertainment wherever you see fit. Right. In today's world, you tend to just watch a lot of movies. Oh, okay. Got it. That was interesting and a little crazy to see. Actually, pretty impressed. <laughs> some super accurate. Yep. Some very Hollywood as expected. If you guys want to see us do more collabs together, let us know in the comments. Go ahead and hit me up on my socials like Instagram at Cameron C. Fath or I have an awesome podcast with my buddy Israel Wright. You can find us at the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast. Awesome. Definitely check that out. As always, please make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on, and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching, and stay healthy, my friends.